All right, so this is semester two. I forgot to put that. Let me write that down. S2. Um, wait, that did not come out in the right place. Up here. So semester two, midterm practice day two. Again, tomorrow we have the last day, and then you guys have your midterm. So this is graphing of um, reciprocal functions, okay? Um, so basically, uh, it's either going to look like uh, this one right here. Let me kind of zoom in. It's either going to look like the top one or the bottom one that all depends on your a term okay whether it's positive or negative um, if it's positive it's gonna look like the top one if your a term is negative it's gonna look like the bottom one, okay so and like I said these are basically your little hints okay uh, your graph can move left and right it can move up and down it depends on your H and your K remember your H value just as usual always is telling you a lie so if it says X plus 2 it's really minus 2 right uh, but the K will always be honest so if it says a plus 3 on K it's really a plus 3 you're gonna move up three times if H down there if it says X plus 2 you're not moving right you're moving left twice okay so remember the H values and the C values are kind of lying to you guys all those times um, so remember those things make notes of that right bring that with you on your test day that we you know what you're supposed to do so all right I got to graph this uh, function here So we're basically just looking for a, a sketch. That's all I, I basically want. I'm not looking for a perfect graph, okay? So my center for this, or what I call right there the crosshair, right, like where the two lines are going to be, um, is my HK. So what is my HK for this graph? Well, if I look, H is negative 1 and K is negative 2, okay? So that's my, what I call that crosshair, right? My center for this graph. So I'm going to go to negative 1, negative 2, which I didn't put any marks on here. Sorry about that. Let me do that really quick. Jumped into it right away here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. So negative 1, negative 2 is right here. Okay? So this is where I'm going to draw my horizontal asymptote, passing right through that point and my vertical asymptote passing right through that point. Okay, so I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit. So what I want to do now is I got to figure out what kind of graph am I going to graph? Is it a greater than zero or a less than zero? Well, I look at my a value. My a value is a two. So I'm just going to label that right here. A is equal to two. Since two is positive, I'm looking at this graph right there, okay? that one right there so I just got to draw that graph using the red asymptotes the horizontal and vertical asymptotes so uh, let me get a pen for this and here we go it's gonna look like this and I'm done that's my graph so when you're doing these problems these graphs find your HK all right that's, you're going to put a little dot right there. Not really supposed to be very visible, but I made it a little bit visible right there. Then you're going to cross that dot horizontally. You're going to cross it vertically. That's your vertical asymptote, your horizontal asymptote, the ones you're not supposed to cross. Okay, you're not supposed to touch the lines or anything. And then all you got to do is look at your A term and ask yourself, should you draw it where it's in quadrant 3 and 1, right? The A greater than 0. Or is it going to be drawn flipped, like on the bottom, okay? So if A was negative 2, just, uh, just so that we know, if A was negative 2 up here, then the graph would have been here and here, where the blue line is. Okay? That's the only difference. It's either going to be uh, diagonally um, bottom left to top right or diagonally top left to bottom right. So it just depends what A is. Again, write that stuff down in your notes. You can write that into your cheat sheet. Um, that way you guys can have a little bit of a reminder when you're doing it like okay This is how I'm going to draw these things, but this should not take you a long time There's no calculations nothing like that. It's just look for your numbers Put them in draw them out and then find your a term figure out which way to draw the graph and it's just sketches You're just going to do a sketch Are we okay with that one? All right next one is a word problem So I'm going to pause this just to let you guys kind of write it out. All right, so the formula you're going to want to use for this is t equals 
x times y over x plus y. So yeah, there's an x on top, y on the bottom, but a little bit more than just that. So x times y over x plus y, where x is the time it takes the first person to do it, y is the time it takes the other person to do it, and t is the total time it takes them to do it together. Okay? Sometimes in a problem, they'll, it'll, it'll look like this, where they said Jake takes six hours, Mary takes five hours, right? So they gave us the time for each. The other problems that sometimes you'll see is they'll tell you it took Jake six hours. It took Jake and Mary 20 hours. How long did it take Mary? So they'll ask you like just one person. So you got to solve for X or for Y, whatever you decide to, to let Mary do, right? So it depends on the question uh, what you're going to have to do. But in our case, they gave us the times. So uh, let we know that uh, for x, I can let it that be six hours. It doesn't matter whether you call it x or y, just assign one. So Jake is six hours, so x is six hours. And then Mary, it took five hours. Okay, so I'm going to call that y. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. The total time it takes them is six times five over six plus five. Well, that's 30 over 11, which is approximately, let me use an approximation. I have no idea what that is. So let me, let me look at that on my phone. I know it's a little over two, but 30, that's 2.727. So what'd you say? 2.73 hours. That's the total time it'll take them. Okay. Remember, the other type of problem would have looked like this, okay? If it takes Jake six hours to dig a hole, and it took both of them 2.73 hours to dig the same hole, how long did it take Mary? And then your answer would have been five, right? So you would have put the 2.73 where the T is, or not, not there, but you would have put that over here. You still would have put Jake as X, but then you'd have to solve for Y. Okay, um, so if we have a little bit of time, maybe we'll look into one of those. But are we okay with that one? Simple formula, okay, t equals x, y over x plus y. Okay, um, not that hard. But if you don't remember it, write it down, put it on your notes. All right, simplifying. There, there's going to be a lot of these types of problems. They're pretty easy, okay, but you do have to remember how to do them. Yes, if you have a calculator, you can punch it into a calculator. That's great. Um, so make sure you learn how to use that. But in case you're like, no, I can do this by myself. All right. What you're supposed to do is break down 63 into two numbers. One of those numbers needs to have a nice square root. What two numbers should I put for 63? What, do I, what gives me 63? One of them has a nice square root. Seven and nine, right? Seven times nine. Now, seven doesn't have a square root, but I know that the square root of nine is three. And this is my answer. If your calculator, keep, if your calculator keeps spitting out decimals, don't do that, okay? Because um, most likely they want the answer like this, simplified, not like approximated. Whenever you get an answer that has decimals, those are called approximations, not solutions, right? Like it's a solution, but it's an approximation of the solution. Um, we want the actual answer, so 3 radical 7 is correct, okay? So, all right, no big deal. Look at number 11. Square root of 45, n to the third, y squared. Now, remember, for this one, what is the index on that radical? A 2, right? I know it should be a 2, so I'm just going to kind of write it right there. So that means my powers have to match 2s, etc. So, all right. What times what is 45? 5 times 9. Okay, awesome. n to the third, I want the powers to match, so I'm going to do n squared n. That's n to the third. And then y to the second is already matching perfectly, so we're good. So this power matches this power matches that power. So things I can take out. The 5 has to stay. The 9 is going to come out. Remember, when you take out the 9, don't write 9 again. When you take out the 9, you're executing the square root. So the square root of 9 is going to be a 3. 
this n is going to come out, this y is going to come out. So this becomes 3ny square root of, what's left over? 5n, okay, and there you go. This is your answer. Again, guys, these problems are not supposed to be like killing you on the test. Like these are supposed to be gimmies. Okay, it's supposed to be easy. If you're struggling, tomorrow, I mean, ask in class. Come in early. Ask me early. Um, we can go over this stuff. If you don't want to talk to me, you can go today after school. Today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. Uh, go today after school. They're open for an hour in the library. There's math teacher in there. Okay. It's not like we have a random person who has no idea what math is and they're trying to tutor you. Like, no, we, we have a math teacher in there. Okay. So go in there, ask for help. Uh, or you can come in early, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, an hour. You can either come here or you can go to the library an hour before school starts. All right. Um, but don't let this be the reason, these type of problems, that you're not passing tests. Okay? These, are, these are not meant to be the, the ones that kill you. Right. Number seven from yesterday, that's a tough one. Okay. This one, not tough. Okay. You just have to know how to do the, the steps. So here's another one, basically like number 11. Just that this is a cubed root. It doesn't really change anything. The, the variables still have to be raised to powers of threes and stuff like that. The only difference is that with cubed roots, we can have negatives inside, which you can see there is one. And then you got to ask yourself, well, what's the cube root of 16? Do I have one? If not, can I break it down? So a student once asked me, if there's a negative in there, can I just take it out? Is that okay? I'm like, yeah, with cubed roots, you can literally just take it out. Okay, you can just remove it. So there you go. We got rid of it. Now, does 16 have a cubed root? No, right? We only have cubed roots for 1, for 8, for, what is it, uh, 27, 64, 125, and there's more. But those first five are the ones that I told you guys. So can I break up 16 so that one of those two numbers that I'm going to multiply has a cube root? What two numbers can I use? Like what gives me 16? 2 times 8. 2 doesn't have a cube root. Does 8? Yeah, it does. So I'm going to put 2 times 8. So I know that's going to go out. That's going to become a 2. Okay. And now I'm going to use my variables here. x to the fifth. I need a power of 3. So x cubed x squared that's x to the fifth and then y to the third that's already perfect so i don't need to do that let me highlight my uh terms with the same powers right there so i'm going to take those out okay so all right if i take out the eight from a cubed root it becomes a two and then I got to take out an X and a Y. So the cubed root has what left over? What's, uh-huh, 2X squared. That's the last stuff that I could not take out. So there we go. We're done. You know, a student asked me, and I don't know if this will help you, but I, I want to share it with you guys. A student asked me yesterday, is there another way that you can do this instead of rewriting the powers and i said yeah there's another way but sometimes people don't like to do it and then he asked me how is it i'm going to show it to you guys if you like it use it okay if you don't like it don't use it so if i were to give you and i'm just doing a really small problem okay just that this only is for the letters. The numbers you have to do normally, okay? But for the letters, you can try this. Okay. What I'm going to do, I notice my index is 3. I know my power is 5, right? What's 5 divided by 3? Now, we're going to do... When did you guys do remainders? What grade was that? Was that like second grade, third grade? That you would write like, oh, my answer is like 2 remainder 3 with a big R. You guys remember writing that big R? I don't know when that happened. That was many years back though. What's my answer here? Five divided by three. Well, how many times does five get divided by three? Well, one, 
right? And um, I put the three here, I subtract two. So my answer is one remainder two, okay? What the heck does that mean? That means on the outside, you're gonna have x to the first. On the inside, you're gonna have x squared. And notice, isn't that what happened? x to the first, x squared, right? That's another way you can do it. You don't have to, but that is another way. You can use old school division. The number in front of the remainder tells you what you put. So let, I'll even change it. We'll just do one more in case you're like, okay, maybe I'm interested. Let's do this one. Square root of y to the fifth, z to the third. Okay, I'm going to do two, okay? And then we'll, we'll move on. So what's my index? Two. So I'm going to do two division problems for y and for z, okay? Five divided by two. That's for the y right now, okay? Two goes into five how many times? Two times. That's a four, subtract, remainder one, two, remainder one, okay? Remember that, two, remainder one. Let's do the z. Three divided by two. So I'm doing the power of three for z. Uh, two goes into three once. Remainder one, so one, remainder one. So the bottom, the one on the bottom, z, uh, two, remainder one, that's for y. That means it's y squared, and then inside you'll have one y left. So square root of, hold on, let me put this over here. Square root of a y. Now the z, one z goes outside, one remainder one. Okay, one z goes outside, and then z with the power of one goes inside. This is how you would simplify the square root of y to the fifth, z to the third, using division. I don't know if you like that better. Maybe you're like, oh, that's quicker. I don't have to break it apart into so many pieces, right? Um, like think about it, if I were to do like x to the 10th on the inside with the square root, you'd have to write x squared, x squared, x squared. Or you can just say 10 divided by two is five. Five of them go out right so it's up to you you don't have to use it uh, if they just wanted to know when they saw it they're like yeah i think i'm going to stick to breaking it apart i'm like that's okay i actually do it this way the way in blue but a lot of people don't like it because it looks too busy so so i'd rather just write it out so it's up to you if you want to use it feel free all right uh, number 13 let me just check we have uh 16 problems i think yeah and the rest of these are mostly uh, square roots and radicals, and some of these are really easy. Uh, number 13 is supposed to be very, very simple. So 4 radical 3 plus 5 radical 3. If they have the same radical with the same radicand, the number inside, they're called like radicals. If they're like radicals, all you got to do is add them together or subtract them, whatever they want you to do. 4 plus 5 is 9, so your answer is 9 radical 3. Okay, 9 radical 3, and you're done. Okay, I think your calculators can do this. Can anybody verify that a calculator can do this? Have you guys done this before? If not, you might want to test it. Okay, but I think your calculator can do a problem like this. I think it can even do a problem like number 14. All right, can I add these together based on the way they look right now? No, right? Because one has a radical 27, one has a radical 3, one has a radical 8. They're not the same. So I'm going to have to fix them as much as I can by simplifying, okay? So I'm going to simplify everything as much as possible. So um, for the first one, 2, I don't have a square root of 27, but I know 27 is 9 times 3. Now the square root of 3 cannot be fixed, so it's just the square root of 3, okay? The square root of 8, I can write it as 4 times 2. 4 and 9, those have square roots. So the 9 goes out, the 4 is going to go out. Okay? When the 9 goes out, it becomes a 3. So I'm just going to take an extra step here. 2 times 3, square root of 3, plus 8, square root of 3, plus, when the 4 goes out, it becomes a 2. So 5 times 2, square root of 2. 
That's just the in-between step. If you want to do it in your head, that's fine. <laughs> 2 times 3 is 6. 6 radical 3 plus 8 radical 3 plus 10 radical 2. Can I now add stuff? Yeah, can I add everything? No, right? Radical 2 does not match up with radical 3s, but the radical 3s match up. So 6 plus 8 is 14. So this answer is 14 radical 3 plus 10 radical 2. And that's your answer. Again, guys, these are not supposed to be killing you guys when you're doing them on the test. These are supposed to be gimmies. These you're supposed to get right. That way, in case you get something wrong, these things you got right and it kind of even stuff out, right? Um, I know that sometimes breaking stuff apart is a little bit tougher, but like I said, you do have a calculator to help you. If you don't know your factors for 27, just try doing 27 divided by 2, 27 divided by 3, right? Go through the division, let the calculator do it for you. Um, this is why it's really, really important that you guys have your multiplication tables and all that stuff in your head already. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but but yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of kids that struggle with it. Um, so, you know, calculator will be there to help you. Any questions on this one? Remember, break them apart. Make sure your radicals match up. Whatever matches up, add it together. Okay? Number 15. The general rule is no square roots on the bottom. Okay? So I see a square root on the bottom. Therefore, I have to rationalize it. Okay? By rationalizing, I mean multiply top and bottom by that square root. Now, if it's just a monomial, radical 2, then you're just going to multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. If it's a binomial, like uh, number 16, that one you got to use a conjugate. Okay, so we'll get to that one uh, soon. So, all right, let's distribute. Okay, this is going to distribute. So, radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6, plus radical 2 times radical 5 is radical 10. If you're wondering where the heck I'm getting those numbers, when you multiply the same radical, so like square root times square root can be done. Cubed root times cubed root can be done. Square root times cubed root cannot be multiplied together. You just kind of put them next to each other. Okay? But this is the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. So if you're going to multiply them, just multiply the numbers inside. 2 times 5 is 10, right? 2 times 3 is 6. On the bottom, I get the square root of 4, which would basically become the square root of 6 plus the square root of 10 over 2. Can I reduce 6 by 2 and 10 by 2? Normally, yes. If they're in a square root, though, don't touch them. They're done. Okay? They're done. Because you can think of this like being in a, in a little parenthesis, right? You can think of it like that. So don't, don't mess with them. Just leave them like that. If the bottom was a square root of 2, then yeah, I could. Are we okay with that one? All right, no, I think we said seven. Oh, this is the last one. I thought I said 17 prompts. So here's the last one, okay? So this is one of those problems where you have to use the conjugate. So you don't use conjugates when you have only one term on the bottom, okay? But when you have two terms added or subtracted, then you're going to have to use conjugates, okay? So the conjugate of 2 plus radical 3, uh, sorry about that, is 2 minus radical 3. Remember, the numbers stay the same. It's just the, the middle term changes. If the 2 in the front of the, on the bottom was negative, you keep it negative, okay? Don't change that. The only thing that changes is the middle symbol. That's it, okay? So, let's go ahead and multiply here. So, I am going to have to distribute right there. So, this is going to be 2 times 2. That's 4. Uh, minus 2 times radical 3 is 2 radical 3. Notice it did not become radical 6 because 2 is not a square root, right? And I know 3 is a square root, so then if they were both square roots, you could change the numbers inside, but it's not, so you can put it next to it. The bottom, I don't know if you guys remember, it's been a little while, but I told you when you multiply two conjugates, what's supposed to happen to the middle numbers? When you multiply two conjugates together, they cancel out, right? Well, 
I want to say middle numbers, but I don't know how you do distribution. If you do it differently, maybe they're not the middle. But two numbers out of the four should cross out. If they don't, you better check your work. Okay, that's like your, your, your safety right there. You'll know you're doing it right if they do cancel out. So here we go. Two times two, two times negative radical three. That's going to be four minus two radical three. And then let's do the other ones. Radical three times two, radical three times negative radical three. That's a positive two radical three minus radical nine. Notice the middle terms are going to cancel, right? Negative 2 radical 3 plus 2 radical 3, they're gone. So 4 minus 2 radical 3 over 4 minus uh, square root of 9 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, so my answer is basically 4 minus 2 radical 3. Because I don't need to say divided by 1. Okay. So, it's a good thing this one was shorter because so are the grades. Uh, go ahead and grab your stuff. Sorry about that. I had to talk about March 22nd. Kind of killed some time.